Yeah. Okay, so University of Fraser Valley, uh, we call ourselves far from ordinary and I'll tell you today why we consider ourselves far from ordinary. So it's a University of Fraser Valley is a public university, first of all, which is means a government university funded by the government of Canada. We are a, 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 a you know, a, a medium sized university located in beautiful British Columbia. Uh, some key facts about a university, we have about students from over 86 countries and about 42,000 alumni. And our current student strength is about between 14 to 15,000 students, full-time students. And about 20% of our uh, students are, are international students. And one of the something uh, very key features about our university is the class size. Our class size is average class size about 25 students per class. You must have like, in a lot of North American universities, big universities have large numbers in their classes, 200, 300, uh, which is great. But for us, we believe teaching is best when class sizes are small. So hence we keep our class sizes small. And definitely, and it's it's very key for, especially for students who are starting their first year, uh, it's very key for them to uh, to be able to uh, have more attention and, and from the professors. So, so that's one of the reasons we keep the class sizes small and that's been very successful. So the picture you see in, uh, on your screen, that's our main campus in Abbotsford. So we have uh, four campuses and I'll talk more about it. That's the Abbotsford campus, the mountain you see behind, that's United States. So we are very close to US border, just about five minutes from, from the United States. So as you all know, Canadian education ranks as one of the best among the world and Canadian degrees are recognized internationally. So whether you decide to complete your degree and stay back in Canada, or you decide to go back to your home country, uh, your the degrees that you get from University of Fraser Valley is ex accepted worldwide. And Canada is also, uh, as many of you know, uh, is a very welcoming and a safe country. And United Nations consistently has ranked Canada as one of the best places to live. Uh, if you pick up the last 10 years uh, data from UN, the top 10 countries to live in, I can guarantee you at least two or three Canadian cities will always be there. Either it'll be Toronto or Vancouver or Montreal, great cities, generally very welcoming and very multicultural. That's, I would like to insist. Canada has been my home for the last 21 years now. I, uh, my journey started in India. I grew up in India. I worked in Africa. I worked in Russia for a couple of years, Eastern Europe for a few years and finally moved to Canada and 21 years, proud to call Canada as my home. Great place, very accepting and, and very friendly, very welcoming. So uh, we are in an ideal location. We are in, in British Columbia. We, have, uh, we are located just about one hour east of Vancouver by road. So yes, between 45 minutes to one hour by road, uh, downtown Vancouver. We have five minutes from United States border about three and a half hours from Victoria City and about two and a half hours from Seattle. We have four campuses uh, in Abbotsford City, Chilliwack, Mission and Hope, where I'm speaking from. Uh, it's Abbotsford City. I live in Abbotsford. Our main campus is in Abbotsford. Beautiful city, and I'll tell you a bit about it. So it's a beautiful city, about 13 to 14 percent of the population is aid between 20 to 29. And one of the very unique features of Abbotsford is 33% of Abbotsford residents are visible minorities. When I say visible minorities are people like me, you know, immigrants, people from India, from Japan, from Korea, from, from China, 33%, that's almost one third of the city is, is, is uh, uh, immigrant, is a uh, visible minorities. And it's, and because of that, uh, you know, it's very, culturally blessed. We have about 150 community events organized every year. And uh, so if you're from South Asia, you will feel very comfortable because restaurants, food, you know, cultural events, temples, everything is available here. And students just love living in Abbotsford, small city, but beautiful. It's also the fifth largest city in British Columbia and the third most multicultural city in Canada after Toronto, Vancouver, it's Abbotsford, it's a really wonderful place to live. I've been living here for so many years, just love it. So as I said, we have four campuses in Abbotsford, Chilliwack, Mission and Hope. These are four cities. These are just within 20 minutes of each other. And uh, we do have uh, our own bus service, which we call this, 
a student union society campus connector, which connects these campuses. So generally, you students would take programs in one particular campus. For example, the School of Business is located in Abbasville campus. So if you're doing a business program, you will be taking all your courses in the Abbasville campus. Or if you're a kinesiology student, you'll be taking most of your classes at the, kinesi at the Science Center in Chilliwack. So you would be taking that. However, sometimes you might have a class in different uh, in, in, in a different campus, then you can just take the campus connector, which is operated every hour. So you will be connected. And the, we, the campus connector also connects you to Langley uh, 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 bus center. From there, you can go to Vancouver. You can take another bus and you can go to Vancouver. So very well connected. For accommodation, I'll speak about our residence. We have a beautiful residence in our main Abbotsford campus. Uh, it's right inside the campus, uh, I, a residence, we call it here, but I think in India and some other parts of the world, they call it the hostel, students hostel. So we have one on campus. We offer suite style rooms. Two students share their pri two private bedrooms with a living room and a bathroom. So two students share one bathroom. It's very comfortable. It comes with uh, a, you know, a small living area with the you have cable TV, you have your own phone line, a very secure and uh, fully furnished. The cost is about $850 per month. So that's one of the options. Some students use it because of comfort and there's a kitchen, community kitchen on the, uh, in, on the residence. So if you like to cook your own food, you are welcome to do so. Uh, otherwise you can rent apartment outside the university. We are not outside the city, we are in the city. So. When you step out of UFE, there are a lot of residences where you can go and, you know, rent to as come as a point paying guest, which can range anywhere between four hundred to six hundred dollars per month, or rent your own apartment and share it with your friends. A lot of dining options on our campus. We have uh, different coffee shops like Starbucks, Tim Hortons. Uh, different kinds of foods are available on our cafeteria. So if some of you who are vegans, there's vegan option available. Those who are uh, who are looking for halal food. Halal food is also available on campus. And uh, we also have, uh, you know, uh, uh, different foods from different, uh, you know, regions are available. Like you have, you know, from Asian food, Indian food, Western food, all of, all of those are available on our, uh, in our cafeteria. You can pay cash or you can have a meal, take a meal plan and you use it as pay as you go. So a lot of different options. And being a very multicultural campus, uh, we are, um, you know, we are, we celebrate a lot of events on campus. There are 65 student clubs and association, a uh, lot of, uh, you know, uh, community events held on campus. Like we celebrate Diwali, we celebrate Holi, Eid, Chinese New Year, all kinds of different kinds of festivals are, are celebrated for our students. We also have very good sports team under the banner of Cascade. We are about 14 sports team. Uh, generally champions of uh, in Western Canada for basketball and volleyball, golf, we have rowing, we have cricket, we have wrestling. And uh, there are two Olympic size basketball courts on campus. And also you have a, a health club on campus, which is students are free to use. So as we all know, your uh, students, uh, you know, enroll in universities, spend a lot of money, invest and one of the main goals is to have a great career. And uh, that is one of the things we, we, we focus a lot is preparing our students for a career. Now, there are different ways we help our students. One is co-op. We offer co-op option. A lot of our programs are, uh, you know, have the co-op option. And uh, we, our career center works with about uh, 1,300 plus companies across Canada uh, where we offer the co-op option. And uh, these, uh, pro so how it works is when the students start the program uh, at university, uh, at a university, you have to register yourself with the career center and then you are on the list. Of, so every time there is a job from one of our 1300 partners, they will send it to you. So generally for co-op, you have to finish one year at the university. After that, you're eligible for a co-op job. Once you get selected, uh, now, co-op is not guaranteed job. You have to get to the to the interview process with the company. Companies like HSBC Canada, IBM, uh, BlackBerry, a uh, lot of uh, Cisco systems, Oracle, they recruit our students. Uh, 
if you usually the co-op term is maximum from uh, 12 months. So between four months to 12 months. So if you are uh, lucky or successful in getting a co-op job, you will stop coming to the university and do your job full time with that company, nine to five or whatever the timing is complete and you get paid for it. And after that, after completion of co-op, you come back to the university and continue with your studies. So it's a great option for you to put your learning into practice, get paid for it, get the real corporate experience. Uh, other options available, we have uh, options to work on campus. You can work on campus and off campus. As you know, as a student, you're allowed to work 20 hours a week. And if you take a semester break, like a summer break, you can work 40 hours a week. We also have research opportunities, about 180 student research positions are available. And we also have uh, field schools, uh, in different programs like uh, social work and all. So a lot of options available um, uh, for our students. In 2019, QS rating, QS is the uh, is a European rating agency. They gave us five stars for employability. So UFE students are very, very employable. Uh, are, they are able to get jobs very fast as soon as they complete their program. So something also we offer very uh, interesting and we are very proud of it is our exchange uh, programs. Now, how exchange works is our university, we have about 80 plus partnership institution worldwide. So how this works is suppose you are a business student, for example, or you are an art student, and you would like to study, uh, explore, you like to study one year in England, or you like to study one year in Australia. So we will find a partner, you come to our uh, study abroad office, we'll, they'll find a partner for you, one of our partner universities, and you can go and study in Australia for one year or in UK or in US or in Netherlands and continue with your study there. And after one year, you come back to our university and continue with your study. So what you have studied in a partner university around the world, across the world, you're able to transfer those credits. So that gives you a truly global education. So uh, a lot of students, we have partners in Dubai, we have partners in Russia, we have partners in China, Korea, Japan, Australia, US, a lot of countries. So as a student, as an international student, you have this option to study abroad with one of our university partners. Great experience for students. Uh, about our programs we offer, we are mainly a uh, university, we offer undergraduate programs. That's bachelor's degrees and diplomas, about 100 bachelor degrees with about, uh, about 100 programs, certificate, diploma, post degree, and master's. We have about 17 bachelor degree programs with in 35 major. We offer 35 majors and three master degrees, and I'll explain some of them. So business is our biggest. We have a school of business where we offer BBA program and diploma in business. Diploma in business is for two years, BBA is for four years. Basically diploma is the first two years of your BBA degree. So if you wish to start with a diploma in business and later on decide, no, you want to do a BBA, you can continue with your study going to the third year, as long as you have a GPA of 2.6. So in business BBA degree, we offer majors in marketing, finance, accounting, human resource management, operations management, and aviation. Now, aviation is a very unique program that we offer. It's a BBA in aviation. We do it jointly with our flight school partners. It's a combination of business studies with aviation, with CPL, that's commercial pilot license. So students have to... Uh, uh, enroll in the two of our, uh, we have two flight partners in, in Abbotsford. One is Coastal Pacific Aviation and one is Chinook Helicopters. So you do your flying there with them and get your commercial pilot license. At the same time, you do the business degree with us. So when you graduate, you have a BBA with specialization in aviation and you are a commercial pilot. So excellent program. And um, so in arts, we have a very big school of arts. We offer programs in social science, uh, BA in social science, humanities, media, communication, language, global development studies, which is like international social work, peace and conflict study. And we offer a bachelor's in criminal justice and a master in criminal justice as well. In science, we offer a bachelor of science in biology. In biology, we offer further majors in microbiology, genetic research, pre-medicine. Then we have BSc in chemistry. We offer biochemistry and biotechnology. We offer physics, BSc in physics, geography, maths, stats, agriculture science. We have a very good uh, uh, agriculture campus in Chilliwack. 
uh, where we offer, uh, you know, a diploma in uh, agriculture technology, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, Integrated Pest Management. It's a one-year program and horticultural management. Excellent program with great career op options available. Then we offer a bachelor's in kinesiology and a bachelor's in uh, BSc with a major in computer science. In professional studies, we offer community support work, BA in community support work, social work, child and youth care, education assistance, teaching, uh, computer information system, and library info technology. In fine arts, uh, we offer a BSc, uh, sorry, a BA in fine arts and a BA in media studies. And then you can also have, you can do uh, associate degree or diplomas in graphic and digital design, theater, photography, associate degree in visual arts, creative writing, painting, drawing, sculpture, and media arts. For fine arts programs, students will need to have a portfolio of their own, uh, like you know, 10 to 15 pieces of, of uh, creative work. That's one of the main requirement for admission into any of our fine arts program. So how to apply? Uh, you know, you have a Illum team is there and they can help you with the application process. You choose a program with a website, apply online. We have an online application process apply online, upload all your academic documents. Basically we need your grade 11 uh, transcript, grade 12 transcripts, both should be certified and stamped by your school office, not the notary, stamped and certified by your school office. And uh, you can upload it with the application and your IELTS score. For direct admission into a program, we are looking at IELTS score of 6.5 with no band less than six. The only exemption for IELTS is students who are Cambridge, who are doing A-levels. If you have English in A-levels, then you don't need an IELTS score. Otherwise, 6.5, no band less than six. We also accept Duolingo, score of 110, and we accept PTE, score of 58 and above. So any one of them, or even TOEFL, 88 and above, we accept that. So you apply online, and we are pretty fast in giving you an offer. We have an excellent admissions team. They work very hard to make sure you get your offer letter. So within a week or so, you'll get your offer letter. Sometimes it takes a bit longer when there's, when, when we are you know uh, overwhelmed with a lot of applications. And just so that you know, uh, we please try and apply as soon as possible. Don't wait for the last moment because our seats get filled up very fast. So the earlier you apply, the better for you. So once you get your offer, and we also have very good uh, scholarship, uh, you know, uh, uh, we offer students very good scholarship. So the earlier you apply, better the chances of getting a scholarship. So once you get your offer letter, pay your deposit. There's a deposit of $5,000. You pay that deposit. And within 30 days of your offer letter, you will have to pay your balanced tuition fee. Get your tish, get, uh, once you do that, we send you a LOA, that's letter of acceptance. And <coughs> with that, you can apply for your study permit. So important dates. Um, we have three semesters, fall semester, winter, and summer. Most programs are offered in fall and winter and summer. Some programs are offered. Currently, we are accepting application for summer intake and fall intake 2022. So the deadline for summer intake, the application deadline is 1st of February. The deadline for fall semester 2022, the deadline is 1st of April. So please, please apply. If Even if you are accepting your grade 12 result next year don't worry about it based on your interim mark sheet we'll give you an admission we'll give, give you a conditional admission or even on your grade 11 mark sheet we'll give you an admission and for students <coughs> excuse me those who are graduating next year from high school you have time till july to submit your final transcript so don't wait till july it'll be all over by then please apply asap so tuition fee so basically the just the tuition fee is seven thousand. $560 for four courses per semester. And with incidentals and all, you're looking at about 16 to about, about 16, about $17,000 per semester. With everything for a year, you're looking about, uh, 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 yeah, about $17,000 per year, about $18,000 per year looking at. Uh, and uh, second semester is a bit cheaper. And then it gets, so that's about the price we are looking at. So I would say students should budget for about $20,000 per year to be more comfortable. Scholarship, as I said, we offer a $5,000 scholarship, $10,000 scholarship, and $20,000 scholarships. 
these are main, mainly based on your academics so to students who are scoring really high grades cambridge students who are score, scoring a star they are eligible students who are in from india subcontinent those who are getting 95 percent, 96 percent and above it's very competitive uh we are offering them scholarships and we we'll let you know right away, a letter will come to you stating that you have been offered a scholarship. So please try and apply as soon as possible. There is no special application for it. Just when you apply, we will look at your transcript and let you know if you qualify for it or not. <clears throat> so what do people see about us? As I said, QSR uh, has uh, given us good rating. I have 2019 data here, but I heard in 2020 also, we got close to five stars. So about 99% of UFE students were satisfied with quality of education and about 94% graduates would recommend UFE to others. So that's pretty high rating for, for a university our size. And we really pride in, in our, 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 the education we give. It's a very, very learning-based university. It's not a research university, it's a learning-based university. And definitely if education is your goal, and you want to live in a safe place, then University of Fraser Valley is the best place. We have an international team, very friendly. We are there to help you. I personally will be there. So students, those who are prospective students, you don't need an appointment. You can come and meet me anytime. We, we are there to make your uh, study at Canada in Canada at UFU very good. So we are available on social media. Please check us on Twitter. Uh, we are on Facebook. We are on um, Instagram and YouTube, there are a lot of videos about our program. My email address is there. Please feel free to reach out to me or Illum team. They can help you or I can help you. So whichever way, uh, we'll be there to make sure uh, you know you have. So that's the end of my, my presentation. And uh, thank you so much. I'm going to, I have a list of questions already before uh, the start of the thing. I'm going to start with the one that is, uh, so the semester one and semester two fees are always different because in semester one, there are additional fees for sports and other things and library fees, but semester two does not have it. So uh, so budget for what the, what uh, Mr. Phyllis was saying is that take semester one fee, semester two fees, put it into an annual budget, and that is your budget. I'm going to start with the questions I have. If people can start writing more questions, but they were <coughs> sent to me earlier. I'm a student who's interested in health sciences. So what pathway would you recommend? Uh, this is an agent asking a question. What a pathway in University of Fraser Valley would you uh, recommend for the student who is interested in health sciences uh, or in nursing or in medical lab, lab sciences? Yeah, so uh, as most universities do that, we do have bachelors in nursing and practical nursing, but unfortunately international students are not uh, and are not eligible to apply for those programs. We have dental assistant also. However, uh, you could start with an associate of science or you could do a bachelor of science. In bachelor of science, we have something called pre-medicine. We have uh, a major in uh, genetic research. We have in microbiology, we are in biotechnology. You could do that. And what I tell my students is, you know, do your bachelor's degree. And after you complete that, you get your three-year work permit during that time. Once you get your permanent residence, after that, you can do these programs as a Canadian resident, the fees is also less. But having a science background for all these wonderful health science programs is great. And you know, my own daughter studied your, uh, BSc in UFE and now she's transferred to, that's another thing that we offer is called transfers. That just, I'll give you an example. Within British Columbia, you can transfer to any of the BC universities. So you could start the program with us, do two years with us and transfer to UBC, for example. Or university, or university, uh, Simon Fraser University, or University of Victoria, and you get full credits. My own daughter, she did two years at UFE in Bachelor of Science in Genetics, and now she has transferred to Simon Fraser. She's in third year. She was able to transfer all her credits. She'll do two years there and specialize in genetics, and uh, major in genetics and a minor in in sustainability, environmental sustainability. So that's a lot of options available for you to go. So for health science, best is to start with a science diploma or a degree. So when do I identify, and this is a question in, uh, recently, just to, to me, can you please identify how do I identify the co-op that I'm interested in co-op? Is it in the application that I identify that please I will be interested or is it just on me? 
Yeah, it's just on the student. As I say, during our orientation, when you come to a university, one of the things, we, orientation, one of the presentation will be done by a career center. We have an excellent career center, as I said, which works with about 1300 plus companies across Canada, not just in, in BC, across Canada. So once you uh, enroll yourself, go to your career, to a career center, tell them if you're a business student, they will ask you, there's a questionnaire. So you can say, I like to work for a bank or I like to work for an IT company or I like to work for so-and-so. So they will keep you on a list serve. So every week there are jobs, which is, which, which the career center gives, they'll send it to you. And what, if you qualify, you need to have a GP of 2.6 and you need to have uh, your attendance in good standing and you can apply to those companies. We will coach you for how to resume, write your resume, your, your interview techniques, you go for that for those you get selected usually we are very high placement for uh for our co-op and one in interesting point is i just found out from a career center 97 percent of our co-op employers hire our students full-time after completion of the degree 97 percent like they really like uh you know the way our students are are you know are we give them solid foundation in education and and the and the employees love it 97 percent hired there they tell the students complete your degree and come back to us fantastic um this is a, from a student i am from pyramid college and we all know pyramid college uh, yeah. thank you mr Bhavnur, for that college fantastic college i applied in bcis under credit transfer program but there is one issue my biometrics is 29th of November. And after that, I have only 25 days for my embassy results because I applied. So what do you suggest? So would we not suggest that he starts in May in case his visa is delayed? Yeah, I think so we understand that yeah, a lot of students are facing that. So up to first week of January, the student can defer. We'll allow you to defer. So what I recommend, keep wait for now and plan for coming in January. If you are unable to get, because the classes will start on 4th of January. And if by 4th of January, you don't have your visa, I recommend, let us know, just send me an email or send my colleagues, uh, the admission department that I would like to defer to May. We'll defer you to the May, May session. And uh, thank you for Pyramids College. We get some wonderful, we have a great transfer agreement with them. We have a two plus two with them for students who would like to start CIS program, BC, BCA with them. And after two years, they can transfer with full credits, full 60 credits to University of Fraser Valley. And students, uh, we also have similar agreement with Mumbai University. So those students who are doing BSc IT in Mumbai, they can transfer. If you have done two years in Mumbai, we'll give you two years full credit. You can come directly into the third year. I also want to say, visit. ask you, a related question, sir. Uh, what is your last drop uh, drop date? Like in terms of, uh, if I was to take, uh, let's say, Quantum University, I can be late and come in till the twelfth of January. Is there a date where you say after this you cannot come in? What is your last date of entry? Yeah. So usually it will be the Friday of that day. So if fourth uh, is a Tuesday or a Monday, so we we'll let mm -hmm. we'll just give you five more days from the start. Yes, date. that's yeah. every after US, that, that's not yeah. <laughs> uh, you will lose too much. You yeah, will have a yeah. hard time catching up. Okay. Yeah. And what we do is we tell the students to talk to the professor, write to the professor. They have to, because the professor will not wait for too long. If you're coming one day later, do tell him. But, and exactly as uh, you just mentioned, they will lose too much. You know, it's, 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 it's not advisable to be late. Yeah. Because uh, if things were online, then you could just catch up. But this is, uh, you are coming in and other kids have already one three hour class is one week's knowledge and you're missing a lot. So one uh, assess team, what is the minimum academic average required for UG and PG programs that was not clear to them from the presentation, please? Yeah, so we don't have any such published this thing, but I can tell you, for example, we have an engineering program. We have an engineering yeah. transfer with UBC and University of Victoria. You do one year with us, transfer to UBC. It's a very competitive program. You're looking at, we are looking at at least 90% and above piece, you know, with physics, chemistry, math, you need to have. So 90% and above for engineering, for IT program, BCIS, Bachelor of Computer Information System, at least 80% and above. For business programs, we're looking at 70% and above. And uh, just so you know, math is mandatory for most of our programs for science programs, you need to have 
minimum score of 45 marks out of 100. For business and IT program, you need 41 out of 100 minimum score to get into the uh, our business degree or IT degrees. And even for agriculture, you need math. And the reason why students ask me, why do we need math is because even for psychology, even for economics, you need math because there's statistics. And one of the prereqs for statistics is grade 12 math. So students, but if you don't have math, don't lose hope. There are two ways you can do. One is the Ontario Virtual School. You can write the math course. It is a one month course, MH, MHF for you. You can do that and submit the scores. You need a C plus in that. Or in India, there's something called NIOS, National Institute of Open School. Please write, there's something called math on demand test, write that test and you, you just need 41 marks out of 100. Thank you, sir. The now new math that has come out for grade 12, which is called the applied math, does that apply also? Can they use that? Because they now have, India has a new math. They don't do the uh, polynomials and trigonometry in grade 12. They have an easier math. Uh, we are all evaluating, all universities, are, this is the first year it has come out. I don't think Mr. Phillips and I can give you an answer on that because it's under evaluation by the department. Yeah. So we will let you know. Gap year, what is the maximum gap year allowed? I can answer that question. Uh, yes. If you're going for post-grad studies, the gap year is a very different question. If it's undergrad, why are you taking time off? That would be a very important question. And Mr. Phillips, I think that uh, a one-year gap is primarily accepted by most institutions. Anything more than that becomes a very big red herring for us. So Mr. Phillips, what do you say to that question? I, I, I totally, uh, you know, attest to what you're just saying is exactly what you just said. One year is okay. You know, you were, you were trying to find yourself. You were trying to think about, you're not sure, but over any year, it's a red flag. And also for the visa purposes also, I think the Canadian embassy does not like if you're like, what were you doing for one year? Because they know, especially from South Asian kids, you finish school, you go to university. If you're two years, three years, you're not, what were you doing? So it, it, it's a red flag. So better to be, uh, you know, uh, you know, try and apply as soon as possible. One thing is that let's say, for example, I had a student and a very good student who started his own company and he was developing it. If you have uh, got this particular kind of a situation, we're not saying you're not allowed to do that. All we are saying is you were not sitting at home. That's not the culture of the, the families we are dealing with. So if you were going to university or a college, it is important. It's against the law you not to tell us that. You must say, I was going to Delhi University, uh, but I didn't succeed. I'm up reapplying and restarting my career, or I was taking time off to help my father set up his business. Something that can be is... Uh, it can be proved. It has to be given to us in a qualitative way that this is what I was doing. But one year gap experience, I was writing the JEE exams or I was preparing for two, um, IELTS. That, those are all very legit things. Question is, what is the TOEFL score required? Uh, you for IBT, uh, for IBT, we require 88 and above. Okay. And PTE, are you accepting PTE? Yes, we uh, accept for PTE 50, 58 okay. and above. Ms. Renu has a very good question. When you ask for a transcript that has been certified by the school, I will give you a little bit of a background in this. A student leaves the school in March, writes his exam, then he goes to pick up his transcript. Those transcripts are always certified. You don't pick up a transcript that's not certified. What do you mean by that? Could you give us a little clearer indication because we can always get it notarized, but certified by school like stamped, you want a stamp saying, this is an yeah. authentic application. It's very simple. Just the photocopy of your high school transcript stamped by the school office and signed by the principal or whoever is in charge. Just that. So, and that you can upload it. We will accept it as official transcript. So okay. photocopy, go to your school, just tell the school office to stamp it and sign it. We'll accept that. that that's about it. It's very simple. The, we don't accept notarized copy from India or any South Asian country except Russia. So if you're a student from Russia, I don't think so anybody is there. There's some notary in Russia is very serious business. It's a, uh, you know, if you're, if a document yeah, is notarized in Russia, it's, it's, it's called attestat, you know, you do stamp it, notarius as they call it. Uh, it's accepted uh, uh, by the, we accept it. 
uh, even the translation done by the notary in Russia or CIS countries, anywhere in CIS, Eastern Europe, but from India, South Asia, Middle East, please get it stamped by the school office. Yeah. So this is a question that Renu is asking, and I know why Renu is asking. Why is there a deposit of $500 to secure my seat? Because there are too many applications, Renu, and if we don't do that, uh, students hold on to a seat, and that's just not acceptable. So yeah, the it's $5,000, sorry. Uh, $5,000. Oh, yeah. okay. If it is $5,000, um, why don't we, because a student has to pay the one-year fee for SDS anyway, why don't we do that whole thing? So 5,000 uh, secures the seats and then they have to send a second amount of money to pay their tuition fee. So can you explain that process please clearly? So uh, as soon as the student gets the, uh, the offer letter, they have one month to mm -hmm. pay the $5,000 deposit. As you rightly said, we get lots of applications and, and our seats are not unlimited. So once you pay the 5,000, it's a refundable deposit, we hold the seat for you. And uh, after and uh, and then uh, within 30 days you pay your five thousand dollars and the remaining fees from the last date. For example, for January for fall intake, for example, um, if you start applying now, pay your five thousand dollar deposit and then you have up to mid May, fifteenth uh, of May to pay your balance fees. This whole this reserves your seat and uh, because we get our programs get filled up very fast, so the best is to do that to see the seriousness of a student. Or if you want, you can pay the entire fees. That's the option that Renu would like because Renu and I work very closely together. The cost of sending money in two drafts is very expensive in India. And also the um, rates change, dollar yeah. changes very fast. This morning, yesterday morning, in the morning it was 59. By the afternoon, it was 61. So things change. What Renu, uh, and I know Renu very well in terms of her logic is, I have to pay for SDS full fee anyway. I've decided it's Fraser Valley. Can I pay my full fee? Absolutely. And, yeah, I don't have to go around doing uh, 5,000, then another 11,000, like th that kind of a thing. Anyway, Renu, we can discuss this further. Uh, Ms. Krishna uh, would like to ask from your uh, favorite uh, old show present TC, is, uh, would you please discuss a little bit more about PG programs? So postgraduate programs, we offer actually three programs. One is Bash Masters in Social Work. Now, this is a very popular program. I get like hundreds of inquiries every day. Uh, and we have a master's in criminal justice and master's in uh, EMET education. Unfortunately, EMET is not offered to international students. So we just have master in criminal justice and master's in social work. For social work, we prefer students having a BSW, Bachelor of Social Work, or related field could be bachelor's in, in sociology or psychology or, uh, you know, but what's very important for master's in social work, at least minimum two years of work experience, you know, in social work. So they need to have two years paid or unpaid, two years of social work work experience qualification for, we need for admission in a social work program. Then we also have one program which is very popular, which is called Post Baccalaureate in Data Analysis. This program is offered once a year. And in May, we are uh, accepting application for May. Uh, the students, uh, generally we prefer students from IT background. So somebody with a BCA degree or a BSc IT degree or bachelor's in math mathematics or statistics. The program is a combination of uh, you know, analyzing data using statistical tools and programs like uh, computer programs like SAS or, or uh, you know, different software. So very popular program. It's an 18-month program uh, with four, which includes four months of co-op in it. The cost is about twenty-two to $23,000. Program starts in May. We are accepting application till 1st of February. Our other master degree, the cost is about $25,000 for the entire program. So not Thank too expensive. Much. I think that, uh, that uh, I'm going to just add to that. When you're looking at data analytics and uh, data science programs, remember that's the field that has is in the market right now. Okay, right now. So Absolutely. please make sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed in your application if you want to be considered because for one seat, there will be at least 15, 20 people vying for that seat. So it's very important for you to do your due diligence. 
Um, the question, and this is a great question again from SS team. I like the SS team, they're asking some good questions that, can I have a conditional accept, acceptance based on my IELTS score and my last semester's mark waiting for the final marks? Absolutely. Which one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, thank you. There is a question, is there a program in physics, chemistry, and biology with no maths? And now, uh, Fires, I can actually, I know the student quite well. Uh, the, the thing is, you have ways of doing math. So if you write to uh, one of us, to Shabon, to myself, we will help you on how to do math. It is not difficult to do it here, or you don't have an upgrading math class in uh, University of Fraser Valley, do you? We actually have, but what we realized, a student will have to do two or three maths, and then yes. you know, math is prereqs for other courses. So they'll be stuck paying a flat fees and just doing one math. So we, not to get into that, we tell students, please do your math, you know, beforehand. And that's why students who, from India especially, those who don't have grade 12 math, we make them write just grade 12 math, not grade 11 math results. Because in, from Indian students, your 10 standard math, we consider it is equivalent to Canadian 11 standard math. Absolutely. So yeah. you just have to show us a 12 standard math. That's why we are asking for 41 marks because we know the math you are taught is really good. Yeah. And in grade 10, uh, just remember that grade 10 marks uh, that we take, we take because you've done a one year of study. In Canada, we do semester. So our grade 10 will be uh, five months of study. You do 10 months of math. So we know that you've done uh, lots of polynomials, differential equations, et cetera, et cetera, in grade 10. And then grade 12 uh, is calculus and pre-cal and all of those kind of things. Now we need that skill set, statistics, but Sir, I have a question from you. In, uh, Indian students do take statistics sometimes. Do you accept that as a, in lieu of math? No, 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 no. we don't. No. Yeah. Okay. So just it's very clear so that you understand that that uh, it's very important for you to, to understand. But please write to us. Uh, Shivang, please write your email in the chat box. We can help them uh, with that. Does Bachelor of Business require maths? Yes, absolutely. Ms. Huda, the Bachelor requires math. Uh, can a student with rich experience nine years after 12th grade in acting, theater, commerce, et cetera, et cetera, uh, any suggestion of taking acting as a major? Can they come? This is Lavraj Grival asking the question. Oh, absolutely. We have something called PLAR. We call it Plier Learning Credit. So if you have actually worked in that field and you're looking for a, a, a theater program, we have an associate degree in theater or we also have a bachelor in media studies and you want to specialize with a major in theater, you can, the nine years of theater experience that you have acting experience will be considered as a plus, you know, you might get some uh, credits. I can't tell how much credits you will get. You'll have to apply for that. One more thing I would like to uh, talk about is transfer credits. I know we didn't have on my uh, presentation. We are very, very generous in transfer credits. So let's say you have done uh, uh, a three-year degree in uh, in psychology, or you've done, uh, uh, you know, uh, some program in India, we will give you, and you're applying for a, a related program at a university, we will give you transfer credits. You will have to send the official transcript. That means your transcript from the university has to come directly from the college. It has to be stamped, sealed in a, in a sealed envelope and sent to us with a course outline. It takes about four to six months for us to evaluate if we don't have an agreement with that university. For example, with with Pyramids College, we have an agreement, so it won't take very long. Within like a week, we'll give you the credits because it's already been articulated. However, with the, or and Mumbai University, but let's say you're applying from some other university, which we don't have an agreement, so it takes about four to six weeks, but we do give transfer credits to students. There's an extra fees for evaluating transfer credits, a credential evaluation fee of $250 we charge students to give them additional credits. Now, if students say, why we are charging this? Well, we are giving you credit <laughs> for what you're, you know, you're saving a whole, a lot of money. Okay. The, the question also comes in and I'm going to just add to that is that if you uh, ask me questions like, should I go to WES and get it done? Can you address that? WES, uh, so you're going well, to pay a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, and, and we, you know, our evaluation is done by our department. 
No, WES is a great uh, organization and it's good for if you're coming in as an immigrant to Canada and you want to get a job and you get your degree evaluated. But when you're asking for transfer credit, our academic, our, our prof profs will look at course by course what you have studied. And that's why we ask for a detailed course outline. WES will not ask for detailed course outline. They just look at your degree, they authenticate your degree. Yes, you're from Delhi University, that's fine. This is, but when we do what we mean by credit transfer, we will look at subject by subject, course by course, what you have said. That's why we are charging you $250. It takes four to six weeks. We will assign a professor to look into that. So, yeah. so you, you will be asked to give your curriculum and then we'll make sure that you covered the thing. Savvy, we've answered that question for you. No, BBA finance does require mathematics. Uh, if, in case a student wants to defer to next available intake, should the student pay minimum deposit? Uh, minimum deposit is 5,000 and they, that seat will be held for him for the next term. And it all depends on how competitive the program is. Remember that the yeah. money's not going anywhere. The money remains in the student's account. Um, what is the admission requirement for a CBSE student in uh, any of the programs? Because you know there will be different uh, uh, they, there will be different requirements for different programs. But base would be sixty percent or better in your CBSE yeah. uh, grade twelve uh, things. And if you're going for engineering, remember seventy or better. How many backlogs for postgrad studies? You know, when you ask for backlogs in a master's degree, you're out already because we yeah. even have so many, so many applications that your application is not going to even looked at. If the backlog happens to be you had two chemistry uh, courses, uh, sorry, a chemistry course you could not complete and you completed the following year, that's a different story. But if you have four or five backlogs, I can guarantee you master program will be out. Postgraduate uh, post packs are very different. I'm giving that from it. Do you want to add anything to that backlog state? Well, I mean, nothing really much, but you're absolutely right. Masters are very competitive. Even a post back is very competitive. We have just 25 seats in data analysis and trust me, we get two to 300 applications. So only the best of the best gets in. So, uh, you know, with backlogs, it makes your case very difficult because admissions into postgrad programs is done by the department. Department looks at it. You know, the other programs are looked by the registrar's office, but for these, they are very picky. Uh, you know, uh, social work seats get filled up like within, within like one or two months of opening up. So, uh, you know, a backlog is a, a big, you know, yeah. makes your application not very competitive. Yeah, I want to tell you that it is not the registrar's office that makes decision on masters, the dean and his the committee. Dean. Dean and the committee sits down and they on a bi-weekly basis look at the applications and then they make a list of those who have qualified and then from that they take the top students so it's a very big process the I would say the sweeter the application greater the probability on January 22nd on campus online uh, program is it online or is so, it uh, uh, yeah it's a very interesting question it's going to be a hybrid now for fall this semester we did about 60 40 uh, you know 60% was online 40% on campus in january intake we're going to do more on campus and less online so we do expect all students there's no program which will be online 100% so we do expect students to be on campus and you know it's very much controlled we're following all the protocols necessary to safeguard our students and and faculty so uh, it will be a blend it will be a hybrid model but more on campus okay so that continues on so if i get a refusal for january 20 tech so application team from wherever you are i want to answer this question for mr phillips and myself refusal is not the end of the street remember yeah. that refusal means you need to reapply and Ms. Sita is, I think, on the thing, will tell you that our success rate for reapplication is between 85 to 95%, depending on the institution you're going to. Something was missing. And whatever was missing, you need to replenish that. Uh, or your one student was refused because the program didn't make any sense. So the we were able to send a letter saying, this is what the program is. These are the jobs, et cetera. So remember, they're not in the, the statement from the high commission is we're not in the business of refusing, we're in the business of giving visa. Reason we refuse is for three reasons, and please listen to these reasons very carefully. You will not be successful in the program that you're coming in. They can't say that to you because they're matching things. Why you got that admission and why you didn't have something written that, hey, you will be doing some upgrading. Number two, 
are you able to afford it? You're coming into a program and you have not paid your fees and you're going through non-SDS. SDS, that makes it life easier. See? And the third reason is that they have found some reason that we don't know, they know that you are not a good entry to Canada. Okay, We can't do anything about the, the, the last one. But the first two, if it's financial, if it is program, those things you can reapply. There is something called the cap notes, which your agent will uh, suggest you request, you pay for it, and they will give you the notes on what they made on your file to say why they refused it. If your refusal is for security reasons, nothing we can do. It's done. It's, uh, it's, it's something that you can question it, but that's with, between you and it. But if it is a program-related thing, write to us and say, they're saying that I that program doesn't make sense or whatever. Get the cap notes, talk to your agent, and then contact Mr. Ravi and myself, and we will help you. We cannot give you any assistance against the law, but we will tell you to go to this site, get the information from that site. Um, backlogs, we've already answered the question. Do you want to add anything else to my big- uh, I think you're absolutely right, refusal not. And we have seen students who've been refused twice, third time they apply, they get the visa. Yep, and yep, you know yep. i've spoken personally to a lot of visa officers and you know they, they you know as you rightly said canada wants you you know i would say canada is one country which really really wants you you know and they want you to stay back too properly you know legally so it's in our interest the country's interest to have the best of the best to uh, to to come and study so yes uh, try and make sure you your application is proper and correct and if something is missing and get the caps notes out you can absolutely chances of getting your visa is very very strong yeah. so application team has also asked if i get a refusal and that's a very very good question thank you um, then can I defer and just keep my fees there and reapply? Will that yep. be the logical thing? Oh, absolutely. Just send a quick email. You can send it to me or you can send it to our applicant uh, relations manager or you can do the admission team. Uh, you know, just say, you know what, please defer me to next semester. We'll, we'll be, we, you know, we understand it's a difficult time, you know, it's trying time and we go all of our way to help you and support you. That and way please, you are free is very and like all other universities also we are we are we understand you know this is not easy time for anyone so we will yeah, try five thousand dollars is a refundable amount so yeah. if you don't have a visa your defer is not there that's fully refundable minus the whatever the exchange rate things or uh, bank visa uh your conditional exception Misha, is going to be on basis of ielts and academics uh, that you must have such and such thing because final grades will come out. NOI, NOI, NIOS marks for mathematics uh, transcript. How can transcript be sealed or signed by a college? Guru Prasad is asking that question. Very important question. It's, uh, to be honest, I, I, I cannot answer this question. Um, I think... Uh, I think we can verify this online. Yes, this, this online. I was going to say, as soon as you give us the, your registration number, we are able to take, get it from online. Ms. Hazel will uh, get that information to Ms. Rabi and we'll give it back to you. It's very easy. Just like CBSC, we get it online. That will also be online because it's under the CBSC board. Um, Masters of Criminal Justice, do you require 16 years of education or 15 years will do? Uh, 15 years will do, but to be very honest, uh, Master of Criminal Justice is very North American focused, so the chances of you getting selected for that program is very less. We prefer students who have background in, in, in the criminal justice system, like prisons or policing or immigration or border forces. So, uh, uh, you know, it's not an easy program to get in, so be ready uh, uh, for refusal because that you have you will be interviewed by the department you'll be they will evaluate you there's a committee formed uh so it's not easy so unless you are in that you have that background so if you're a lawyer and you're applying for that program to be honest your chances are very less you can apply i can't stop you but let's say you're from the police force you know and you you're applying to because a lot of our profs in this program are sitting police officers if you come to a class you will see a lot of sitting police officers attending the class because they go for the senior positions so excellent program and currently it's under review so we're not even accepting application for this program they're trying to review it and and uh, so that application for this program is stopped so chances are not very good 
Yeah. Uh, Shivan, can you start answering some questions in the chat box? Because you know the answers for that. Do Come you on. have a co-op in BCA um, dash BS, BCIS program? Do you have that a co-op? That program has the highest number of co-op job offers. So our Bachelor of Computer Science, BSc in Computer Science and Bachelor of Computer Information System. In fact, I would say 60% of the jobs that we get are for that program, IT program. Yeah. Okay, this question is confirmed percentage requirement for data program um, at the master's program. Um, I believe the, um, the thing is that anything below first class 70% honors is not going to be make, make it in that program because there's too many application. Yeah. Uh, hard copy marks are required. Can electronic communication be accepted? Electronic is accepted. Finally, yeah. hard copy have to be given. Yeah, so electronic is accepted. Now for uh, like a data analysis, we would want official transcripts. Now official transcript has to be in a sealed envelope stamped from and certified in a, from the university that we would need. Your high school, you can, electronic is accepted. Sometimes if you're not able to get the your sealed envelope official transcript, you can ask, request the college or university to email it directly to the registrar's office. On some, in some cases, we accept that, but you'll have to give us a reason why you're not able to get the hard copy in a in a official transcript uh, sent to us. In a, uh, this is a good question. Can I check the status of my student? Kester uh, is asking that uh, question. Does the college have a portal in where the student's yes. application can be checked in status? Yes, absolutely. So we have a, a, a application portal where you will, you have your password and your username. You can always check that. It's like your bank account. You know, when you, you can log in, you know what is in process. Offer letter submit, su released, LOA released, in process. So all that is, it, it shows you what is the current status of your application. So absolutely you can. Thank you so much. And I want to tell you, uh, I will be very, very honest with you. The University of Fraser Valley has become very, very popular because there is a group of 140,000 students in Canada who are doing high schools. They are, they're white on rice. They want to go there because they want to go to UBC, University of Fraser Valley. Maybe they were sitting at 83% and UBC required 87. So they are taking the seat. So earlier the application, better the probability of getting in. And definitely we do want international students. What's our international population? 20% of your population? Yeah, about 20%. So right now, now it's a bit le less than that. We are close to about 2,000 students. Yeah. Idea. So please do remember earlier the application. Uh, how much is the application fee? Uh, not 500 Canadian. Application fee is no, no. $150 Canadian application yeah. fee. Uh, distance education, uh, correspondence education accepted as a degree. Uh, very difficult to see where yeah. the distance education has come from. So it will depend on the institution. Do you want to add to that a little bit? Yeah, distance education, like, you know, if you have done Manipal, Sikkim, you know, distance education, we don't accept that, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, so that won't cut it, yeah. Yeah, so it depends on the institution, but you should ask before you apply, take money from the student. 10 plus three program in Gujarat. We have students from Gujarat Technical Insti uh, Institution. What do you recommend? My recommendation, do you wanna know? Is come into an undergraduate program and get one year of transfer yep. credit. That you should uh, apply. Absolutely right, exactly. 10 plus three from Punjab board, state board, technical board, from Maharashtra, from Gujarat. Yes, we can do that. You can apply, exactly. get the one-year credit. Can a student apply for a bachelor's program, reach University of Fraser Valley, and then switch to a two-year program? Does is that looked down upon? <laughs> no, not at all. Absolutely, you can change your mind. Anything you can start the program with a business a degree and change into a diploma because basically the diploma is the first two years of a degree. Yeah. Or you can start the program with a diploma and change your mind and go into the degree. So it's absolutely, I mean, uh, you know, we, we help, you know, it's, it's a no brainer. It's not a, not, not a problem at all. And then continuation of the same program. Why don't you have an articulation agreement with Delhi University would fill your coffers like anything? Why just Mumbai? Um, I don't know. That's something we, that- we, I did approach Delhi University and absolutely I, uh, you know, we have an agreement with Khalsa College Delhi University and uh, some uh, programs we have, but it was not very active because, and I'll tell you why, because 
students in you know the cut off point for delhi university is like 99.99% and the kids who get into the north campus and all like they are already looking into bigger things and better things and uh, we will welcome delhi university students we are also getting i you know the uh, ip university uh, from uh, which is also in delhi we are accepting credits from there but mumbai we are currently running 2 plus 2 agreements with couple of colleges in mumbai university bsc it uh -huh. two years will get you directly into the third year and it's very successful for the last 10 years we have been running this 2 plus 2 with mumbai university any student who has done bsc it in mumbai university can transfer two years credit to us and get into the third year or anyone who's from a ptu punjab technical university college who's done two years we'll give two years credit to your bca program from ptu okay now this is a couple of good questions and it is I know the answers for it. Is there any option for students with IELTS of six and all band six? And any um, Kundan Kumar is asking, that was from, from Pathway, that I have a student with 6.5 and one band is 5.5. What is What are the choices? Okay, we have something called qualifying studies, but I'll be very honest for students from India, we are ex we, we expect them to have 6.5, no band less than six. And the reason we are not accepting 5.5 from India is because the visa approval is very low. Just so you know, our visa approval is almost 95, 97% and above. So we believe, uh, you know, I always tell students, don't spend your money on a qualifying study semester. Please redo your IELTS. Try and get 6.5, no band less than six, and your path will be very simple and easy. So remember the answer is you can apply and then the visa would be refused if you're doing that. Better than that is to rewrite the exam and get the six in the 5.5. Yeah. Yeah, it's cheaper. cheaper also. And rewrite it. What would be the last day to submit visa or passport request, uh, defer request? That's an application team. If you can write to Shivang, he can answer that for you. There is no last date that Mr. Phillips can, I don't want to put him in that position because last date he's saying, the if the classes are setting on third, by 10th, we want the child in classroom. That has been covered because you would, each week of missing a class is, amazingly difficult three topics have been done and some tests have already been done so that to catch up is very very difficult as for defer that time um requirement 6.5 can we can you help us with which link uh, tester link for the application absolutely we can help you shivan can you put the link for all right done that one. thank you uh how to accept the offer? They're having a little trouble. I've got four or five questions asking me, how do I accept my offer? So you once, you get the off, once you get the offer letter, just uh, pay the deposit or just write back to the admissions at ufe.ca. I may have accepted the offer. Uh, so when you get a letter, offer letter, there'll be a, a letter accompanying with saying, uh, dear student, so-and-so, uh, please write us back. It'll be a simple email address, admissions at ufe.ca. Just write back to them. Thank you so much. I'm hereby accepting my offer and I'll be sending my, my $5,000 deposit within or my full fees by so-and-so date. And that's about it. And, you know, I'm very involved myself. I'm involved with the students from South Asia market. So the moment you put your application, uh, you will get an email from me as well. And I'll, because, you know, I, I want to make sure students from all South Asia, Middle East, uh, you know, are taken care of. So I, I, you can feel free to write to me. And you know what? I'm very involved with the students. Uh, I answer each and every email. So please connect with me. But, you know, of course, don't ask me like, how's the weather and all that. You can find out yourself. But if there is a problem, like your application is delayed or there's something, you're, oh, you're not getting an offer letter, please do write to me. This is all for agents as well as students. You can feel free to reach out to me. You know, Ravi, it's been four weeks and I haven't got any offer. What's going on? I will follow up with the registrar's office. Uh, it's better to write to me than to the registrar's office because they're very busy. I will look into the system and see what's happening and why there's, if, if there is something got stuck, I'll give them a nudge and tell them, hey, you know what, please, can you follow up? And they usually are very good. Within 24 hours, they'll, they'll act on it. So please feel free to reach out to me. Every student who applies from South Asia, Middle East, and all, I will write to them and say, hey, thank you. You are missing this, this, this document. So then you have to you have to submit. So please, with your application, remember grade 11 mark sheet, grade 12 mark sheet, or an interim mark sheet, 
your IELTS score. Once you have these three things, your application is complete. And then we will send you the offer letter. I have to say something to them. Mr. Phillips is the reason Abbotsford uh, University of Fraser Valley and Abbotsford community is doing so well because he's been there for a long time. When he says you can freely write to me, that does not mean that every day you send him the same question. I would request you that he's a very, very, very busy person, just like myself. I'm saying that one question, make it legit question and send it and he will respond and then wait for things to happen. If you send him three emails in 24 hours, not a good way to behave uh, in, with, the, with the senior person in a university. He's a senior, senior person. Now, your protocol is, your first is to talk to your, if you're a student listening to this, talk to your agent. The agent will talk to Shivang. Shivang, if he needs, cannot get clarity, I will give an answer because I know University of Fraser Valley well. Then if Shivang cannot get you an answer, he will go to Mr. Phillips or you can go directly to Mr. Let's solve the problem first. If it is just, do I need this? Do I need that? We can answer that. Mr. Phillips is busy. He doesn't need to answer because we know. But remember, protocol is go to your agent first because they also have the answers. Will the students from India who took homeschooling from grade nine to 12 from uh, or at a school based in Nevada, United States, be eligible to apply to a bachelor's degree. Now, I want to know what the school in Nevada is. And if it is a school that's private and is providing, if it's a state school, that's different. But uh, Mr. Phillips, over to you. Yeah, as long as it's accredited school, uh, you know, we'll accept the transcripts, you know, yep. um, uh, as long as it's accredited. Uh, but if it's like, you know, because we do have a team in the registrar's office who do the check, they'll, they'll, they'll find out, they'll find out what's the standing of that school. If there's something not right, they will let you know and they will not accept it. But definitely if it's an accredited school and there are no red flags and we will accept those transcripts. Okay. So if you're doing a 10, this is a very good question, 10 plus three in Pakistan, for example, or in India, and I didn't take maths. So now I have one year of university. Uh, will I do the maths uh, requirement as online or will you uh, will you take the thing and give him conditional acceptance? By the way, you're asking the same question in different forms. Uh, uh, Bias, please remember that there is no shortcut. Math is required, period, yeah. period. There's a big, big dot there. Yeah. So how do you meet that requirement? Whether it's 10 plus two or 10 plus three it makes no difference. 10 plus three, he will get a credit for a year. 10 plus two, he will not be able to enter, but both 10 plus three, 10 plus two require mathematics. Um, if they can, the conditional uh, offer be given in case the IELTS score is pending? That's a very good question. I've written my IELTS, it's not there, but I've done my high schooling. Uh, what will happen? No, we will, uh, we can give you conditional admit if you don't have your grade 12 results, but for IELTS, we cannot give you a conditional admit. We will, you, we will wait for the IELTS score. Only once the IELTS score, we have received the IELTS score, only then we will give you the, uh, the offer letter. So without IELTS, it's not possible. So what I would say, if it's taking time, send us a Duolingo, we accept Duolingo, you know, 110 and above, 110 and above. Uh, Duolingo is like 48 hours, you get the results. There are some people who have to um, log off and I understand that because you are students and you're going to work, but good questions and everybody's saying thank you to you, sir, for informative session. Is there any Indian universities from whom you do not accept students for PG programs? Um, I'm going to tell you that there are some non-credited uh, yeah. universities that are not part of a list of universities that we get. Uh, unfortunately, we will not be able to accept some corner university that calls itself a university. It has to be an accredited university. Uh, and to, go ahead. We also follow up with the UGC list and AICTE list. You know, UGC, yeah. University Grants Commission, they always send a list of these are like banned universities or these are like our, you know, universities which are not in good standing, we will not accept those. So our, our, our registrar's office has various tools to find out about the university, whether it's a fake university and all, we do follow up with those lists. We are given updated list of what's happening in India. 
and uh, you know uh, you will be surprised how well informed our, our our registrar's office are to find out about universities and all so yes if it's it has got some problem then i don't think so they will accept it labraj uh, the question is yes that that school would be accepted just send me the send shivang the transcripts i will get it evaluated from mr phillips and uh, that's a part of the job illum does illum is a educational consortium we have no interest in any monetary things we are just helping the student making sure that the transcript and then the uh, university has the information they need and they're not spending time so because we are all short staffed so remember that more i can give them there's just a question on what are the courses for humanity students without maths is there any course for humanity students without yes, maths we have uh, we have a diploma in general studies we have a bachelor's in integrated studies we have a bachelor of arts you can do ba in history with a major in history anthropology so many different just like a, a arts with and doesn't need math none of the media programs need math theater none of them the the program that need math are business it criminal justice agriculture and uh, psychology and science programs they need math the rest of the other programs there is no need of math without math you can you're welcome to uh, you know apply okay thank you very much i'm going to turn it over to uh, to hazel in a minute thank you very much for uh, doing that we have 11 more minutes but uh, i would like uh, people who have come here and people are saying thank you elium team for organizing that we have a next one coming up for Uh, Ontario Tech very very soon Mr Phillips uh, she's saying it's wonderful to see your face after a very long time Krishna is giving you things but we have received a lot of thanks for you Mr Phillips and I have been friends for a very long yeah. time I think your babies were not born yet yeah but, yeah, uh, yeah you're absolutely yeah. right you know uh, you were uh, you know I think when I joined this line uh, Canadian education line you were the only Indian in in the marketing uh, in the post secondary education sector and i heard your voice i think we were in vietnam and i and i thought <laughs> sounds like a south asian and i was so happy to see you because i thought i was the only indian guy there but yes i think we both uh, you were you were way you know much earlier than i was and i think that time in early 2000 there were not many south asian or indians in marketing promoting canadian education and you were one of the first persons to be in that and i probably i might be the second person and yes, then and afterwards Yeah 1997 was my first overseas trip in Africa okay. and I was so confused if you've seen my suitcases with the pieces of paper and things because I didn't know what I was doing but uh, uh, we've done a great job and uh, you have been I'm I'm way older than him I'm, he's like my son we are very close friends also but he's also very strict with me if I'm saying something I said no that's not going to work Rune I don't push <laughs> So the, no, no, you, is... you, you are, uh, you, you have great knowledge, and I've always had a lot of respect for you. And, and you know, I've seen you how you have, you know, evolved in this education sector. And it's such nice to see you have so many uh, people, experienced people on your in your team. You know, Hazel and Krishna. I know, uh, you know, it's such wonderful to, uh, you know, to see all of you. And we've all come a long way. But thank you so much for organizing this event. And as I said, students and agents, please, this is a great. uh you know elum is doing wonderful work for us please feel free to reach out to them or to me um and uh, we look forward i look forward to more events like this i might be going to india in december uh, i'm not yet finalized yet but if i do i will let you know uh, maybe i'll uh, meet up with shivang or if anybody you want would like me to meet i might be in delhi and mumbai and bangalore so we will set up a schedule for you uh, okay. anyway we will help you out but anyway thank you so much very, very much and krishna is right there looking very beautiful i like the new haircut <laughs> and so there she is and hazel over to you thank you thank you thank you so much karuna so first of all a very very big thank you to all our participants this evening uh, it's pretty late here and I'm, i i think we cannot be grateful enough for taking this time out so big thank you to all of you agents our dear friends and our students thank you so much ravi it's always such a joy to have you Same. it's uh, it's so wonderful much. to have you here and listening to university fraser valley i mean it's amazing the opportunity it's that awesome. it provides and it's home away from home so 
uh, for every agent, every student that you're here, you're in good hands. And it'll be a great academic and a professional journey, a great start to that. And I hope you, this institution is top on your choice list. The person that I would like to thank the most out of all of this, I can't help, I will, Karuna. She always oh. keeps it so much beautifully fluid and going. Um, and especially, I think, and Ravi, you rightly said, you know, the, the beginning of the whole thing of international education, I've seen it closely and people like yourself and Karuna, you know, you have made a huge difference in the lives uh, and so many stories. You're such an integral part of stories, but I mean, who all attest are these agents who are here. I'm sure they attest to this journey and the students' lives and parents who must be ever so grateful. Thank you so much. This evening has been very productive and definitely we look forward to welcoming students from all of our partners that are here present uh, to University of Fraser Valley. Wonderful so having much. everyone. It's such a pleasure to see all of you and hope to see you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Swam Malik, can you show your face? He's the face of University of Fraser Valley in yeah. India. Contact Maybe. him, he will be there to help you. Yeah. Krishna. All right. Thank you so much, Ravi, sir, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Hazel. Everybody All take care. Stay safe. Thank care. you. Sir. Bye bye. Karuna will stay on. Uh, in yeah. the Shivang and I will stay. Shivang, Shivang, please stay. Thank you. Yes, cheers to Shivang, says Labraj. I think we had people from many corners of the earth, from various yes. parts of the globe. I mean, I was just looking yeah. at the list uh, yeah, of participants. Everywhere. Yeah, very grateful to all of them. Okay. Just stop the recording, please. Pathway Immigration said, 